It is a big oil painting. The unique characteristic of this painting is that it has a foreground focus and a 106 degrees. Most oil paintings this size has a middle ground focus with a degree of 90. What this means is that it doesn't matter how far or how close you are to the painting, it seems real. The title of this painting is Walking Along the Harbor. And the reason is because when you stand beside it, it's as if you are actually near the boat. This big oil painting is about the most famous fishing seaport in Taiwan. The style of the fishing boat is similar to the Japanese style rather than the Chinese style. In the same way, the lifestyle of the Taiwanese is quite different from the lifestyle of the Chinese. And that is why most Taiwanese do not believe that Taiwan is part of China. The characteristic of a Taiwanese fishing boat is the white metal body with a different colored edge. Here is the captain's office. From here, the captain can look out of the window and control the boat. You can see that the edge of the roof has a colored line and is shaped like a baseball cap. This too is a characteristic of a Taiwanese fishing boat. There are three lights on the roof. The lights help the fishermen work at night. You can see that the shadow cast here below the three lights is actually the reflected light from the bottom of the three lights. Therefore, there is a green color to it. The bottom of the three lights also shows the reflected light from the white roof. This effect makes the bottom of the lights look lighter than the dark area of the lights. Here are two colored plastic canvases near the three lights. Notice that they are green and yellow. These canvases can be moved by pulleys to cover the front part of the ship to protect the fishermen from the rain and the sunlight. The cast shadow of the canvases on the white roof is a little complicated. Notice that there are three values of the cast shadows. The first and second are the lightest area, which show the reflected light from the white hat edge and the yellow canvas. The third is the dark cast shadow, which only shows a little blue from the sky. The canvases are hung by rings and a rope. It is tied to antennas which the captain uses to receive information about the weather and to get orders from his fishing company. On the left side, you can see the antenna on the roof of the second ship. Here are the railings on the roof with two buoys on the inside of the railing. The buoys are made of plastic balls inside a net. The buoys show the location of a long fishing net in the sea. On the right side of the captain's office, we see curved white handrails. The handrails help the fishermen to move smoothly inside the boat. Notice that there are no sharp edges on the two handrails. The vague edge shows the filling of a circular shape along the handrails. The bottom of the two handrails shows a cool green color of reflected light from the floor of the boat. The dark area around the two handrails is a space of beautiful reflected light. The technical term in painting is reflected area. The difference between painters and artists is the use of reflected area in their works. A good master paints romantic reflected area better than most painters. In this painting, there are a lot of reflected areas. This painting describes the events that happen 
under a violent sunlight. And this is the painter's personal characteristic. He likes the scenery and landscape at noon. If you follow the direction of the curved handrails, you will be led to the first of several cool green iron covers. Notice the fissures on it. Now, look at the second and third cover with rust on them. It tells us that the iron covers are in frequent contact with seawater. There, is a wooden hole in front of the three iron covers. The fish that are caught are put inside this hole. The hole is just like a mouth of a freezing stomach. The Taiwanese call this hole the cover of a stomach. You can also see several wooden boards in the hole. These are called the inner stomach covers. So, totally, there are two stomach covers. The first is the inner wooden stomach covers, which can hardly transmit heat, and the second cover, which are the outer iron covers that protects the inner covers. Following the directions of the covers to the right side, we can see a cylindrical motor. It is used to pull the fishing net or the large amount of bait back to the boat. Going right from the cylindrical motor, our eyes focus on two dirty pylon blocks that are hanging on the railing. These two blocks protect the boat from kissing anything hard. The white curved railings at the front of the boat shoot our eyes into three different directions. The first direction is to the right side. We see a rope tied to something that is not captured in the painting. The second direction is upward. Here we see an iron cable with a little red rope flying in the wind. Follow the iron cable to the top right side of the oil painting. Move along the several ropes positioned in the sky back to the captain's office of the second boat. The third direction is to follow the railing to the left side of the second boat. Now you can follow the rust on the iron boat back to the captain's office of the same boat. How do our eyes follow this big oil painting? We follow from left to right, then from right to left. Our eyes move in a counterclockwise way or an inverse C. This is also a personal characteristic of Evans painting. He wants to move people's eyes along a path that he has designed. Although there is a designated path for our eyes, there is also a balance inside the painting. We see the direction of the boats from left to right, and the direction of the clouds in the sky is the same except for the little red rope flapping in the wind. Notice how the wind is from right to left. The balance is hidden in the wind. How many boats do you see? There are actually three boats. One can also see the way Taiwanese fishing boats park in a seaport by looking at this painting. Notice how the third boat is tied to the second and the second is tied to the first boat. The first boat is tied to an iron pillar.
the nature of art is contrast, and that is seen in this oil painting. We can see the combination of contrast between the light and heavy ships. The second boat is heavy because it is made of iron, and the first boat is light because it is made of plastic. There is also a contrast with color. There is a contrast of warm color and cool color. The second boat is a warm color of rust, and the first boat is a cool color. There is the contrast of old and new, as the second boat is older than the first. There is also a contrast of direction, up and down. Here, we see the head of the fishing boat is up, but the head of the iron boat is down. We can see a cord going down the side of the boat. Even though we cannot see it, we know there is a polylon block between the boat and the dock. The bobbing of the heads shows the movement of the sea water. The direction of the clouds near the horizontal line of the painting is positioned like music. Big, middle, small. Small, middle, big. It points to the right side. The directions of the clouds on the high sky are like moving arrows. It also points to the right side. It shows the different directions of the wind. In the sky, it is from left to right, and on the land, it is from right to left. This is the contrast of the direction of the wind. Here is another eye-moving path. We can see the trace of the flowing fresh paint. The painter, Evan, jokes that this happened because it was the painter's fault. He put too much turpentine in the varnish. The fact is that seven layers were painted in this area. You can follow the paint down to the long iron bar shaking in the hot air on the concrete. The iron bar points to the right side. We now see an iron pillar and finally we see the wild grass. Avan says the environment of the grass is awful. Notice that the grass receives no water or dirt. It only receives salty winds and harsh sunlight. However, the grass still lives. This is the Taiwanese spirit. Taiwan will never surrender to the communistic regime of China.